Mark Spencer from Ripple Training here. We're talking Title Nations. I'm in the Title Inspector Fanica Pro 10. I have Ripple Title Nations selected. And this tutorial is about the title box theme of these three templates. They all work pretty much the same. Uh, I'm going to focus on the write on box. It has a few extra parameters. I have it here in the timeline over a clip, and I'll play it. And you can see it animates on the title, it animates on this box, and it also automatically blurs the background. If we go to the title inspector, I'll jump right to the blurring, which is right here. You can choose not to blur the background, or if you do blur it, you can choose how much blur to add. Going back to the top, you can decide whether you want the animation in or out to occur or not with these checkboxes. And you can select a different font size and color right here. You can go to more font properties as always for anything in the text inspector. All right, back in the title inspector, by default, it animates in by character with a spread of one, which means if we go back and step through it, that each character comes in and we can usually see the next one while one is still animating in. If I increase the spread, more characters are animating on at a time, but the total time of the animation does not change. It just means it, you get a smoother animation. If I put the spread down to zero, we get each character appears on the screen without a fade, and it's more of a type on effect if I play that through. I'll put that back to about two. You can animate in, in any direction, including random. If you do choose random, you can click the generate button to change the random pattern. How it animates in is this speed in pop-up menu. Right now, everything e comes to an ease to stop, but you can accelerate or decelerate, choose from those options there, uh, and then choose whether each individual letter has that speed applied to it or over the entire duration or um, once per loop, which are really the same thing in this case. In this case, I'd usually leave this right where it is. The duration is how long the animation in takes. So if I crank this up, it'll be much faster. And if I bring it down, it'll be much slower. The next set of parameters do the same thing for the animation off the screen. So I'm going to skip those and go to the box. So the box, you can change whether it draws slow, medium, or fast. The start point is interesting. By default, it starts, you can see at this corner, let's go back to where it first writes on, starts in the top left corner. But if you want that to start somewhere else, the easiest way to see this is to make it almost finished. And then I'll drag on the start point slider. And for instance, we could have it start at the top middle, or maybe I'll have it start right at the right corner there. If you hold the option key while you drag on the value field, you can make more precise adjustments. So I can have it start right there. And now if I play, it'll start in that corner. You can draw forward or reverse. You can change the size here in the inspector with these parameters, or you can drag on this on-screen control, which will allow you to change the size of the box relative to the text. It doesn't automatically change for the text. You need to change it depending on the text that you put in here. Go back to the title inspector. The box roundness determines how round the box is. Of course, you can change the color. And then the joint may not make sense unless the box is not round and it's pretty thick. So I'll make it pretty thick. This joint right here is rounded by default, but I could choose to make it square or bevel. So now we've got a nice sharp joint there. And then the start and end cap, for instance, if I change the end cap, let's look at when it's not quite drawn fully on yet. The end cap right now is round, but I could make that end cap an arrow, and then we would have an arrow that draws on to complete it. The arrow will go away when it's done. What I'd like to do then, once you have an arrow, is you can change the, the length and also the width, so I can make the arrow no wider than the rest of the box, and that's kind of a nice effect like that. I can play that for a different kind of animation. You can also choose to fill the box. Let's make the width a little narrower and add some fill opacity. One thing I like to do is make the fill color black with a low fill opacity. Can bring more attention to the title without really colorizing it. And the blur we talked about and drop shadow simply adds a drop shadow to the entire object. Finally, these mask size and mask offset parameters 
are more useful for the scaling box where you may need to adjust the animation based on the text that you add in as the box grows up. By default, you can see it just leaves a little bit of a gap around the text, but you can choose exactly how much gap it leaves if the box is scaling by adjusting these parameters here. So that, in a nutshell, is how to use the title box theme templates in the Ripple Titlemations collection.